Well, I had to take a little detour here because they had the other road closed where they're cutting down a lot of that debris that got all tangled up. So I imagine they got work trucks cutting and stuff. But I thought I'd show you this. These are two black connector boxes. That don't make no sense. If you understand what I'm saying, it makes no sense. What it is, it's 5G coming to Ozark, Missouri. I have to check back on this because one of them will end up being, or both of them will end up being an antenna, like the silver round ones that we see. But right now they've got two on one pole. I, I bet when I call the number, they can't explain that. All right. You can see where I'm at. There's that cell phone tower. I can almost guarantee you that somehow that is connected to that cell, to cell phone tower over there. You can see it's a big one. All right, I got to get on down the road. <laughs> it's uh, it's not easy to talk about 5G to people, local people around here. When I talk to them, they act like uh, it's a good thing, and um, I don't, I don't try to tell them it's a bad thing. I just try to tell them that they need to, they need to uh, research it for themselves. Don't just be told what to believe because there is a lot of propaganda built around 5G. It's not been really tested. And I know people go, well, buddy, that ain't right. They got people that test these things to make sure it's safe for the public. No, no, there's enough video of uh, some of the key people that are behind the, the testing part of it. And they even say that they're omitting some of the tests because they need it now, like they need 5G today. The big game changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines, and they do not go through physical objects as well. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals. Now to make this work, five, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure intensive, requiring massive deployment of small cells. I'm confident that the actions will lead to a cornucopia of unanticipated innovative uses and will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important because it means that U.S. companies will be the first out of the gate. And that is why 5G is a national priority and stay out of the way of technological development. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. The future has a way of inventing itself. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to define the future. We won't wait for the standards. We're already seeing the industry gearing up to seize this opportunity. Verizon and AT&T tell us they'll begin deploying 5G trials in 2017. And the first commercial deployments they're talking about are expected in 2020. And we're not done. As part of our July 14 action, we also plan to ask for comments on opening up other high frequency bands. Many of the high frequency bands that we will make available for 5G currently have some satellite users as well as some Defense Department applications, or at least the possibility of future satellite and defense users. This means sharing will be required between satellite and terrestrial wireless, an issue that is especially relevant in the 28 gigahertz band. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. If something can be connected, it will be connected. Hundreds of billions of microchips 
connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. A lot more antenna siting decisions by local governments and tightened our shot clock for siting application reviews. America's local governments will play an important role in determining how we fulfill this national priority. You can be sure of only one thing. The biggest Internet of Things application has yet to be imagined. Tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important. Ask a question, we'll start with you. Sir. You needn't egg me on on this one. Uh, moments ago, I was attempting to talk to some people who came to attend the meeting and have concerns about radiation and 5G. And uh, one of your security force um, uh, intervened, uh, told the guy he couldn't show me the T-shirt that he had wished to display at the meeting, forced him to put it away, and confiscated my FCC-issued ID. Is this consonant with the discussion that ought to be taking place here? And what's your reaction to this action by your staff? I've just heard about it for the first time, Todd. I mean, obviously, this is an open meeting, uh, you know, and I'm sure that if your uh, if your credentials have uh, have been mistakenly uh, taken, uh, you will get them back. But there is a responsibility for uh, everybody who comes here to behave responsibly. Approving the Spectrum Frontiers order, the United States becomes the first country in the world to identify and open up vast amounts of high frequency spectrum for 5G networks and applications. This is the most significant step yet. And uh, our BDS proceeding is dealing with that issue. Lydia. Hey, Tom, with the Hi, Lydia. Study showing wireless causes cancer subthermally. How can we proceed with more wireless expansion with our 60 standards only recognizing thermal effects, ignoring thousands <coughs> of studies showing cancerous effects, neurological effects, reproductive harm? Immune Lydia, do you have a do you have a question? A I do have a question, Mr. Okay, Chairman. Okay, I'll, I'll answer I'll answer your question, Lydia. Lydia Bayou, Bloomberg BNA. I thought I'd show you this one with a double connector box, is what they call it, but uh, I can plainly show you where they've re they taken the connector box down and they put this round silver looking antenna. Matter of fact, as I get into Rogersville, I'll stop and show you, give you an update on uh, what's going on in Rogersville at the Hardee's and the McDonald's. So hang on, stay tuned for that. I had to stop when I rode by it because it ain't just two, it's three of them. Three of them. And this place is called the Bread of Life. So when you call to ask about these, you got to tell them it's in front of the Bread of Life. Now these things 
are mighty close together for be connect boxes. I don't know. I just thought I'd show you a picture of it. Well, less than 200 yards from where the triple th tree was of them, there's another rigging up for two of them and less than 200 feet apart. You can't tell me that is normal. That is not normal. And this is how close we are to the pole. You know, the tower. I wish you'd look at that. All right, got to get down the road. Well, you can see the tornado damage while I'm here. Let me just show you that. Evident, evidently, a part of the storm came through here. You can see those trees. You can see all this. And back behind that tree, which I don't have a view of right now, is a bush hog. Well, there's a, there's a piece of farm equipment flipped over there. The house back behind me has a blue tarp on most of the roof. But you can see even the wires down on the bob wire fence. So something, part of the storm came through here. Tore, there's a telephone pole right there. They probably had, yeah, that's one they replaced right there. Maybe we replaced both of them because that looks, all that fixtures on top of that one look new. Yeah. That 5G is going right to that tower right there. It didn't knock the tower down. Ain't that something? Wouldn't it be something if we found out that uh, they use 5G to steer tornadoes? Well, I want you to look at this one. It had a connector box on it, but now it's been upgraded with a antenna looking thing. I don't know if I can see any numbers on it, but it's a little smaller than some of the ones I've seen in Rogersville and, and Ozark. I'm gonna show you where I'm at. That's a landmark, that old barn right there. A lot of people know that barn. And a lot of people know this house here. And that's where it's located. So I thought I'd show you that while I had a chance. Well, as you can see, you can see that one's got an antenna on it now. And I'm going to show you where it is. I'm at the Hardee's and looking across to McDonald's. And as I come on over, when I get to the sign, I can go up and look at this one. I remember when that was a black connector box. I, matter of fact, I remember when all three of these were black connector boxes. Now that's an antenna. As you can plainly see. Alright, I'll show you this one. That's right there. Look at that one. I remember when that was a black connector box. So now you just got three of them in a real close proximity. It's one, two, three of them. And now I'm looking across over there. I hadn't seen that one until now. But you can see the the round wire. So that'll be four. Covering. It basically makes a square if you look at it. Well, that's the kind of shit that I, I've... Excuse my language, but that's the kind of damn stuff that just pisses me off. They tell you it's a black connector box. I've called the number. They say, well, that's all it is. Then I say, well, why do you take that down and you put the antenna? They say, well, that's not an antenna. But if it's not an antenna, then why did you take the black box down? So I might ought to record me calling that 1-800 number and just let you hear how they you know when they get confused what they talk it's so funny but I don't know if you can see my reflection but I'm wearing my new kit from uh, Springfield Brewery Company and I ain't got nobody to take a picture of me <laughs> so I'm doing it this way but yeah 
if I didn't point it out to anybody, nobody would ever know. They wouldn't have a clue. Well, the Amish are on the job. They're going to have that sucker fixed in no time. <sighs> Got to be way far from them because they don't want you to be right up close to them, videoing them. But uh, they're already putting shingles down and won't be long at all they'll have that house fixed. And look at the damage from all this. It went right across the top of this house over here almost. Well, maybe more of an angle back. Hard to say. Hard to say. But I thought I'd show you the Amish was hard at work on this house. I know the homeowner is glad to see that. Hey, bike riders! Hey! How y'all doing? Good! <laughs> he said the roof got lifted up. Oh, I know what he's talking about, the shingles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 